Howdy y'all, I'm Jason from Code Mix It Go, and I had the great honor of helping out Wicker Manor in their haunted shooting gallery this year. Wicker Manor is a home hunt that thousands of people visit every year. They do all of this for charity, and the amount of detail they put into the home hunt is really amazing to me. They even have an elevator simulator that makes you feel like you're falling down a mine shaft. How cool is that? But this year was extra special to me because they wanted to add a shooting gallery and I'm honored to be able to play a part in Wicker Manor. So this video, we will see how the shooting gallery was made. I hope you enjoy the story we put together for you and links to see more Wicker Manor will be in the description below. Please try to stay to the end to see some outtakes and as always, thank you for visiting Code Makes It Go. I used to be a software engineer. Developing software was my life until I decided stand-ups were stupid and I got fired. Now I've been working in this haunted mine ever since, five days ago. Being a programmer, I'm not used to this manual labor. So the work was hard, but the job, it was simple. There's only two rules here. Find gold in these here walls and don't die. The last guy didn't follow the second rule so well and he got fired. They say if you give up, you never know how close you were to the gold. Those people never worked in this here haunted mine. All I found today was this pink nugget of something. Turns out the pink nugget was just some old miner's chewing gum. My day was about to get better. Seems there was a shooting competition in town where I could win some cold, hard loot. I made up my mind then and there that I was going to this competition. I don't care if it took me a fortnight to get there. I was going, well, I made it. Time to get this show on the road. Well, well, well. I thought I smelled fear. Well, you man enough or you chicken? It's not fear, it's Old Spice. And nobody calls me chicken. Dag nabbit. I swallowed that nasty old gum. You know, I don't want to be wasting my time with you. So why don't you get up on here and show me what you can do with this here rifle. All right, I will. Pick any card. You missed the card. I knew you were all hat and no cow. I'm more cow than you'll ever be. Was that so? Oh, it's so. Yeah, is it? We stop flapping or yapping and find out. All right, well, why don't you step up to this haunted shooting gallery and whoever hits the most targets gets this here cash. <laughs> I'll go first. And as far as shooting galleries go, this one was a plum doozy. I had all but one question. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. How'd you build this here contraption? Well, now that you're asking, a wily old feller named Code Makes It Go, about your same size, he made it for me. Is that so? Well, yeah. Is that so? Yeah. Is that so? Yeah, I mean, come on. I got, I got the video right here to prove it. To build a shooting gallery, we need five things. Targets, something to hit the targets, logic, sound, and some animatronics. To start off, we are going to build the targets. So this is the first prototype design of the target. Each target was self-contained with its own power supply, relay, microcontroller, and adjustable photo sensor. To test this concept further, I placed a battery in a work light with a fake battery and connected this to the relay. So now it is easy to see when the relay is triggered because the light will turn on. Next we are testing the adjustable photo sensor. The reason we want the photo sensor adjustable is so that we can adjust out for ambient light. As you can see it works great now, but what happens when we point a spotlight at the sensor? As expected, the target is stuck in an infinite loop. All we have to do is simply adjust for the ambient light amount by turning the potentiometer until the trigger LED turns off. Now the laser will trigger the sensor while the spotlight is on. 
So here at Code Makes It Go, we always have a proper burial for our prototypes that helped us get to the final design. So this time, I have this hooked up to three sticks of dynamite, our prototype here, and it's all ready to go. All I have to do now is, <sighs> I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I'm gonna do this without any protection. All right, here we go. Ready, three, two. So here is Rev2. We have a nice red ring, five holes in the back for LEDs, and a little platform for the photo sensor to sit on. The platform also has holes to drill into place if needed. The LEDs are hidden behind the red target ring, which makes the red ring and the platform illuminate really nicely. Next, we're going to build the rifle to hit the targets. Here is our old western style BB rifle that we are going to modify. Starting from left to right, we are going to add an orange tip for safety, and next, we will add the laser pointer. To trigger the pointer, we will need to modify the trigger and add a bit of feedback. I think the most interesting and fundamental place to start is the trigger. Without that working, nothing else really matters anyway. Using a very small switch, I was able to find the perfect spot for it. With a little bit of glue, the bottom fit perfectly and the trigger would press it without any modifications. Finally, I did a quick test to ensure the button is making contact and the trigger modification is complete. Next, we are moving to the laser and orange tip. At first, I thought the laser would be mounted inside. So I aligned and mounted a laser where you would normally place a BB. And it turns out these inexpensive laser lenses aren't straight and neither is the barrel. So the crisp laser dot became a fuzzy dot. So this proof of concept didn't work. The next logical place was to put the laser inside the orange tip we were making anyway. I drilled out the orange tip and did a quick test. The laser was horribly misaligned, but we were back to our crisp laser dot. To address the misalignment, we added adjustment screws to the tip so we could pivot the laser around and get it aligned perfectly. This ended up working really well, and we were able to get the sights aligned pretty decently. Since we are on a good path now, I added a quick disconnect to the laser just in case it burns out and we could replace it easily. Then we ran the power cable down the barrel past our little trigger switch into the stock area. Now for the final step, the haptic feedback. The stock area is fairly large and it should be easy to find something that can give a little kick when the laser is triggered. This is the 12 volt 4200 RPM vibrating motor with a case that just so happens to fit perfectly in the stock. As you might be able to see, it does give a bit of feedback. Well, that's it for our BB rifle modifications. It is now ready to connect to our controller. And now we're on to the most important part, building the controller box. The controller box is the brains of the operation. It is what will tie everything together, the props, the targets, and the rifle to make the shooting gallery work. In total, we will need 20 outputs and 13 inputs. To support this many inputs and outputs, we will use the Arduino Mega 2560. It has over 50 digital I.O. pins. It will fit this project perfectly, and it's programmable to do whatever we want it to. Now that we have our controller, we will also need relays, amplifiers, digital switches, and then smush everything into this project box. To mount the electronics, I printed out a bottom plate and added some threaded inserts for the relay board and the audio amps. Then created a second floor for the Arduino Mega to sit on. Now, time to start wiring, and this is not going to be fun. A total of 32 connections need to be made. I also had to add transistors to control the target lights. This is because the Arduino can only handle 200 milliamps of total output power, and we will be closer to 800 milliamps with all the lights on. I also added a high current MOSFET switch to deliver power to the haptic feedback. Now onto the fun part, the software. The trigger, laser, haptic feedback, target, lights, and sound are all controlled independently through software. This means we can adjust the timing of the laser and the motor vibration separately from the trigger. We can also disable outputs if they are not needed or wanted. So in our game, if a player does hit a target, that target's lights will turn off for 5 seconds, and it will also trigger the relay output for the prop, and play a sound. In addition, we can disable this target from receiving any more hits for a set amount of time. The final step for the controller box was to install the indicator lights for power and the trigger. Which brings us to our next step, the sound. As you saw earlier, we will be using two audio amplifiers. This is because we will have two MP3 players one for the prop and voice audio, and the other for the gun sounds. We did this because we did not want the gun sounds to interrupt the audio of the prop sounds. Now we can play two audio files at the same time. 
The last addition was a small remote control to start the game from a distance. And finally, on to the animatronics. All of these props were owned by Wicker Manor and already had mechanical movement built into them. So all we had to do was connect 120 volt AC through the relay board for each prop. Set up a target for each prop, adjust the timing, find someone to test it, and you're done. Is that scary? No. Well, give me that there phone, boy. I gotta win me some money. All right now, let's see what you got. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it, but this dude moved like greased lightning. <laughs> 36 targets. Beat that. Well, here goes nothing. You have better luck with a broadside of a bomb. Oh man, I've never seen shooting like that before. <coughs> you only hit three targets. <laughs> oh man, well, I guess I'll be taking my money then here, boy. Here you go. Take one for the road. Not a bad day after all. That day I went shooting for gold, and I like to think I got a piece of it. Alright then, step up here to this haunting shooting gal. Haunting? Don't care how long it takes me to get to this, I'm going. If it takes me all night and we're here. I forgot to take my vest off. And today, I have the great honor of helping out Wicker Manor with this haunting. Thanks for visiting. Be careful out there.